paper documents are such a common and integral part of our world that we take them for granted. Until, that is, we are reminded of their vital importance to our lives when faced by their potential destruction. For instance, as the Earth's natural resources are consumed and some species of plants and animals vanish into extinction, we must rely more and more on paper documents to know the impact of our actions on our world. Such documents are found throughout museums, research institutions, archives, libraries, and other collections. One reason that documents are so valuable is that they are often the primary or only record of our most profound enterprises. Documents preserve information on everything, from our first small steps into space to our earliest aircraft in the sky. Even though many of the actual aircraft themselves have long since been destroyed. Other documents preserve information about more earthbound structures that are endangered or have vanished. Some architectural drawings are the only record we have of the appearance and scale of threatened or lost structures. If such images become distorted from poor storage or handling, perceptions of our diverse cultures can also become distorted. Collections documenting diverse plants and animals are especially fundamental to our understanding of the world. Scientific illustrations, for instance, may help gauge subtle changes that species might have undergone because of changes in their environments. These changes can threaten the existence of some species that could, in turn, threaten our very lives. For example, to find out whether mutation, evolution, or extinction has occurred for a species, scientists may closely examine specimens found in research collections. Such research collections include illustrations that record the actual color of the specimen used in the original species description. However, comparison between the early original type specimen and a modern example can be complicated especially if the colors of the original illustrations have changed because of storage in acidic envelopes or other poor conditions. Preservation policies must be written to protect these unique and irreplaceable documents. Careful preservation planning can reduce the need for expensive conservation treatment or restoration in the future. Cost-effective preventive care procedures must be integrated into preservation programs, including conservation treatment, collection maintenance, research, environmental control, training, and duplication. Sound preservation policies should require periodic surveys to assess a facility's environment and identify problems like poor display and storage conditions. Preservation surveys should also prioritize collections by comparing their relative values, uses, and deterioration in order to target resources and funding for preservation efforts. Handling guidelines should be written to inform staff and users about which materials and methods are appropriate or not for storage, as well as for the display or exhibition of documents. Procedures for collections maintenance can include the replacement of harmful materials as well as some light flattening and cleaning of documents. Appropriate preventive care can preserve both the longevity of the collection and the budget of the repository. From a point of cost efficiency, preventive care is far less expensive than the conservation treatment which becomes necessary once deterioration is allowed to progress too far. Even minimal resources can be used with maximal effect if administrators, collections managers, curators, conservators, and the users of the collections all work together to slow down rather than accelerate the deterioration.
Preventive care is particularly important since documents can, besides evidential and research value, carry intrinsic information, which may be destroyed by deterioration or even by the then needed conservation treatment. Analysis of the techniques and materials involved in the production of the document and of subsequent changes to it may provide us with information well beyond that contained in the image or text itself. Moreover, we can deduce from these analyses how and how quickly the document may be expected to deteriorate. However, the quality of information extracted from documents by material science is only as good as the material care undertaken to protect the documents from change. Paper-based materials are found in many different types of collections, but they dominate the holdings of archives and libraries. In libraries, individuals trained in library science must also care for circulating collections of bound volumes. In archival holdings, archivists who are usually trained historians maintain the order and context of records of specific individuals and institutions. In both archives and libraries, paper materials are important for their informational value, in archives also for their evidential value, and in both occasionally for their intrinsic value. In museums, paper materials may be collected along with paintings, sculpture, textiles, and other artifacts. Paper-based materials can be important to curators and exhibit designers, not only for their high aesthetic or market value, but also for their research value in illuminating history. In research collections, paper-based materials have been considered of ancillary value by researchers, scientists, or collection managers who in the past were concerned more with artifact or specimen collections. But in fact, such documents are often the primary sources validating artifact or specimen collections. Documents can be defined as anything that records information. So there are a bewildering array of documents, although there are some clues to their identification. Documents come in many types of formats or forms and have various substrates or supports as well as media or the material that forms the image. A document substrate might be cellulose, as in newspapers, or cellulose acetate or nitrate, as in slides or negatives. Media include colorants and binders found in ink manuscripts, silver in the emulsions of some photographs, or magnetic particles on audio and videotapes. Formats include single or sets of sheets, or bound volumes, like pamphlets and books, whose pages are joined by adhesives, staples, or sewing threads. Each of these various components of documents have inherent chemical and physical properties that change as a document ages and deteriorates. The strength of the substrate may be weakened or the color of the media can shift. Such deterioration can be caused by chemical reactions involving acid materials, oxygen, and water vapor. Many documents are self-destructive from the moment they are made, since their chemical and physical components are reactive and unstable. This instability, inherent in some documents, is sometimes referred to as inherent vice. Paper made prior to the 19th century was relatively stable. For most of history, paper was handmade. Paper is made from a pulp of fibers originally derived from plants. The fibers are dispersed in water. Once they have been evenly distributed, they are randomly deposited on a paper mold. When the mold is shaken, the fibers become interlocked and physically bonded to form a felt-like web that becomes chemically bonded after it is pressed and dried.
This early process of hand-making paper from cotton, linen, or bast fibers resulted in inherently strong paper. During the Industrial Revolution, machines were developed to mass-produce paper by casting pulp on continually moving belts. Fibers in machine-made papers tend to line up parallel to the length of the belt, weakening fiber bonding and creating a grain in paper that can cause the paper to curl, crease, or tear in this direction. In addition, increased demand for paper resulted in the need for new sources of fiber, some of which are unstable, like ground wood pulp. Acidic materials like lignin, found naturally in ground wood pulp, along with unstable additives and procedures like acidic bleaching and sizing, cause many modern papers to discolor and weaken as they age. Ground wood and acid-sized papers are not very permanent or durable and can crease, split, and tear, particularly along the direction of the grain. The media found on paper documents can also be extremely reactive or unstable. For instance, friable graphite from pencils can smudge when rubbed by handling or adjacent materials. Or paint can crack and flake off. Fugitive colors can fade if exposed to light. Soluble media can dissolve and run or bleed and feather, even penetrating into the paper to cause strike through, seen on the reverse of the document. Oily or acidic media can cause discoloration by offsetting onto other documents or striking through their own paper substrates. Some acidic media, like iron gall ink, can even destroy the paper on which it is used. Documents composed of acidic materials must be separated to prevent contamination of their neighbors. Materials such as cellulose nitrate and acetate photographic negatives can give off gases as they age. When they are in closed containers or humid environments, they may rapidly decay beyond recognition. If they have begun to deteriorate, photographic materials should be copied to preserve their information for scholars. Duplication methods include making surrogate negatives or prints. These can then be scanned onto computers and the images distributed worldwide. The duplicate negatives, like the originals themselves, should be placed in controlled environments, such as cool or cold storage, in order to slow down deterioration. Duplication, which replicates only the superficial appearance of the original, not the physical or chemical makeup that authenticates a document, can nonetheless protect an original from unnecessary handling. Deterioration is accelerated by detrimental environmental agents, such as light, temperature, relative humidity, pollution, and pests. Light can cause oxidation, which leads to chemical changes that can fade or darken some types of paper and media and make paper very brittle. Document deterioration caused by inherent vice, such as sensitivity to light, can be accelerated by incorrect use, storage, and display. Only part of a document might be affected by the light if the document is partially covered by items laid on top of it. This is especially obvious in documents that have been matted. Display or exhibition of paper materials result in most of the excessive exposure to light that documents receive. Sensitive items should only be exposed to light that is filtered to block harmful ultraviolet radiation. Even then, light levels should be low and the documents exposed for only short periods of time.